So when we are reading the historical books of the New Testament, it's important for us to remember that there are two, sometimes three layers to consider when we're trying to get a fuller understanding of the material. We, first of all, the historical books in the New Test Testament are recording the Acts of, G of Jesus and the Acts of the Apostles after, Jesus, after the Ascension. And so the first layer is created when Jesus is going around doing these acts or when these events are occurring. Jesus is, has an agenda. He is specifically there when he's performing these different acts. He's doing them in such a way that uh, for a purpose. For example, uh, one of the things when Jesus uh, heals the leper and he touches the leper, he intentionally breaks the law. He touches the leper. Does Jesus have to touch the leper to heal them? No. Jesus healed people all just by saying it. So does he have, no, he doesn't have, he's Jesus, he can do what he wants. But he touches the leper in order to break, to make a, a break with the law, to make a point. He heals um, someone on, sa on the Sabbath. Does he have to heal on Sabbath? Could he have healed on the next day or the day before? Absolutely. But he's doing that for a purpose, to make a point. And he's putting those events in an order. He's, he's doing those acts in such an order to create it so that a person following him around would, oh, wow, they would get a lesson by seeing him and seeing the order that he put those lessons, those particular acts in, and then it would create a better understanding for the person. So Jesus is doing that. He's told many times he's there to seek and save and to train his, train up his apostles. And so when he's doing those acts, he's putting them, he's doing those acts very strategically for a reason. The next layer is created when you have the person that's recording uh, Jesus's actions. That person that's recording Jesus's action, they're writing that particular gospel for a reason, for a particular reason. And sometimes there's a third layer, such as in the case um, with, um, with Mark, where there's a third person involved. This is a Peter who's, a, who's the eyewitness, the person who's followed Jesus around, who's then telling this story, telling the story to his scribe, and then his scribe writing it down, and his scribe writing it down in such an order that it, it creates um, for a reason. For example, um, Mark will arrange, arrange um, activities. He'll arrange these healings in such a way he'll group them together. Now, did these healings occur in this order? No, but this is the way that Mark records them. He records them in this order so that a person reading his, his gospel will be forced, drawn right to the conclusion. Oh, okay. So he, he's manipulating the information, manipulating the text in order to for a purpose and in Mark's case he's writing to a Roman to a Roman audience and so his whole purpose in writing that book is to convince these Romans that Jesus was the son of, of God and so all of his his um, his his writings are geared to that way see these this is very strategic um, and so when you're reading it when you read the text all those things have to be considered you have to put on the, the glasses of what Jesus meant by it, and they have to put on the glasses of what of what Jesus' agenda, put on the glasses of what Mark's agenda and Peter's agenda. So you have to kind of look through all three sets of glasses to get a fuller understanding. So um, when we are reading it, it's 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 very important to know that historical context and know all of that, so that when you are reading it, you're getting the full message, the full understand, the fullest possible understanding that. God wants you to have. So, you want to know more about this? A good place to look would be the um, to go to the website and go to the lesson, the introductory lesson on Mark. Okay.